strategy from what that's being described as, Aria. They were really help holding themselves back against Florida State in last year's matchup. You see, he has coached six Ace Sun players of the year. He knows how to get the best out of this program. He's built this program from scratch in his 16th season, and he's done a phenomenal job of really being a staple in the Ace Sun. But last year, they really held themselves back, played behind the ball, and it, unfortunately for FGCU, did not work out so well. We'll see if they turn it around a little bit, maybe play more free, like you said, maybe take some chances, work the outside, and get one of those one touches into the net. Jim Blankenship started the program at FGCU back in 2007. They didn't have a soccer team in the D1 level until that year. Florida State hasn't lost a game in 13 matches, 90% win rate in Tallahassee on this field. FGCU hoping to have the upset of a maybe a century here in the capital city of the Sunshine State. We are ready to rock. Knowles in their all whites. Robbins early touches FGCU in the blue. Here's win, Florida State. Trevor debuting a new back line. Only Lauren Flynn has experience. See her push up the pitch. Now to number two, nice swung. One of the more dangerous wingers in the country. On to her preferred left, dices inside the middle. Now a early cross towards the back post. And that's what nice swanger can do with that left foot. She likes coming in. She can really play anywhere in that midfield. Has really played primarily right in the center to get some feeds, but still likes to run with the ball, turn and shoot. Hips a little bit open, too wide. An angle was way outside the far post. But a nice little surge of energy started by Lauren Flim working up through the center of the pitch. It's a Florida State team we mentioned in the open, 5 nothing over Florida, the fifth consecutive win for the Seminoles over the arch-rival Gators. Emily told you they scored early, they scored often, and something about the orange and blue doesn't have an answer for the garnet and gold. Ryan Penske still trying to get his feet wet. He mentioned that to us earlier this week and when we talked to him today, just trying to be himself. That's positive from FGCU, deep in Florida State's territory. And they win a throw in. And it's still a feeling out process for Brian Penske, but I think the, the week between games against Auburn and Florida really helped themselves. They saw a lot of videotape. They had a lot of scrimmages, a lot of work on the field to really get themselves honed in on what they want to do. And in a way, it was kind of uh, a throwback called, you know, to what Florida State did winning those national championships, you know, build from the back, cut the field off in half. But then it, you see the implementation of a little bit more free, at, you know, play at will, taking the ball yourself if you're a midfielder or an attacker. Dangerous chance here for FGCU running onto the ball and earning a corner. Is that Labby? It was. Ashley LeBay, the sophomore from Lake Worth, Florida. And this is positive if you're Jim Blankenship. This is exactly what they want. They want to drive that ball deep down the flanks and towards the, the goal line to see if they can get some corners like this. That's a good ball flying into the air. And now a low line drive shot. Florida State deals with it. And now Brown and the Jets, they've been turned on. Olsen running with her. Can Brown turn her body and find her teammate? Does well with patience. Now she finds her teammate. Into the box, onto the left foot. Opportunity. It's dealt with well by FGCU. Garcia really coming in there. Got some chance to really work with some green grass. Nice little cut to the outside, but tried to feed it back in where Scarpelli was able to deny a pass. Early action from Florida State here at the Seminole Soccer Complex. Eighth ranked Seminoles. Flynn missed some time with the USU 20s. Slots it into Garcia. A beautiful touch to Olsen. Her shot deflected. Leah Scarpelli again <laughs> coming into that center side. Or right there in front of Katie Sullivan protecting the keeper. Now Brown. Olsen, edge of the box. Nice swanger, she can give it a go from there. It was deflected and into the mitts of Sullivan. Well, Eagles are known for flying. Well, Lauren Flynn's making a name for herself as Flying Flynn, taking it from the back and really generating a lot by herself and setting up her teammates. Olsen, oh man, cut it back. Scarpelli just coming in at the last second. The right side of the net was open 
for Olsen as well. Tough break for FSU, denied a goal there. Brand new back line for Florida State. Again, gone. Pavlisko, Madrill, Carl, only Flynn still in action. Something Brian Penske was really proud of was the way that they've played in the back. That shot deflected for a corner. From the back to the front, Florida State has earned this corner. Nice Swanger will do the honors. Out swinging ball from the lefty, senior from Huntington Beach, California. He's had a renaissance season for Florida State early through four matches. Has always looked dangerous, is now finishing her chances. Goals will run a set piece. EY towards the net. Sullivan does well, the reigning A Sun coach of the week. We talk about Florida State's back line, Trevor, and the way that they've tried to piece that thing together. And Brian Penske, extremely proud of the way they've played. And, and that's something that FSU is going to have to do. Only two goals allowed so far here in the early part of the season. And, and Ron EY in particular has come from the midfield spot on that left side area and now is a, a left fullback. And she's really, I think that really suits her game well. She's very, very good with possession. She has a lot of poise and control. So those, those moments when you have to calm things down, when you're getting you know pressed by an attack, you have to really have people back there that can really be under control and get the ball out. And EY can do that. And she can have really good service as you saw there with great range from way out of distance. Without a doubt. And so Florida State with the coaching transition, a lot of unsung heroes for Brian Penske in his first season. We welcome back Emily. Yeah, Aria, I just had to ask about Lauren Flynn, kind of being the veteran back there, but he said it was really all of the back line stepping up. He said nothing but good things about Lauren. She's a phenomenal player. She has had a few seasons now to work on her craft. But Aria, coach told me probably using the unsung, un, unsung heroes in the back line so that Lauren doesn't feel, although it's cliche, it takes a village and everybody's stepping up. He's just incredibly proud so that Lauren can just do Lauren, lead the pack, but also be accompanied by fantastic soccer players. Yeah, no doubt, Emily. And you know, Ron EY is the name that he threw out there. Gilcrest, obviously, and when it's not easy to have to come in and play for Florida State. It's not easy when a coaching legend retires. How about this ball from Brown? One touch to Olsen. She's through onto her right. Knocked away at the last moment. Florida State recovers. And now Nyswanger on her left couldn't get it clean. That's an easy play for Sullivan. That was one too many dribbles by Olsen. She had the net if she just committed and just received the ball and shot. I think she has a goal here. We'll take another look. And again, Florida State doing immense, immensely good work in space. Great connectivity. But you see here, Olsen, if she doesn't, if she just takes the shot now, she has a really good open far side but decided to try and go for more control, but FGCU closed the distance. Garcia, the outstanding freshman, did she keep the ball in? She did, cuts it back to her right, now towards the penalty spot. Here's Brown, one touch, deflected over the bar. That's a good look from Jody Brown. Scarpelli, Scarpelli how about it, Trevor? Is a one-woman wall a couple different times now where Scarpelli has denied an FSU attacker. Again, Florida State, you know, FGCU is giving a lot of space to Florida State in the box. Scarpelli just turns her back right to Jody Brown, saying, nope, you're not going to go high on me. But it is a, another corner for Florida State. It's nice swanger once more. This time an in-swinging ball towards the near post, flicked on towards the back. Oh, just over. Gilchrist. How about that from Heather Gilchrist? Gilchrist, one of those outstanding freshmen Florida State brought in from Boulder, Colorado. Former state champion in gymnastics, really showcasing what you can do. Yeah, and that's one of, on. one of those unsung heroes that, that Emily spoke about earlier. When we talked to Coach Penske, maybe preseason, right, Trevor? He said Gilchrist plays beyond her years. She's mature. I feel like I'm talking to a 25-year-old grown woman sometimes. And that's high praise for a freshman to come in at 18, 19 years old. But she's allowed Lauren Flynn to be herself on the back line too. Yeah, when you have you know raw good talent right here for Florida State to build and replace, 
you know, this back line to keep that tradition going of elite defenders is really, really critical. And Gilchrist fits that mold very, very nicely. And as does Sophia Wen, who I'm sure we'll talk about here later on. Election here towards the end line, saved by Florida State. And, you know, they're multi-sport athletes. You know, we mentioned, we met, you know, Gilchrist is a state champion in gymnastics. Sophia Wen's a, a four-time world champion in skimboarding. I mean, these players have a lot of balance. They are certainly elite athletes in multiple different sports. See the nice little touchdown by Wen to control the ball. And, you know, once upon a time, you know, back in the day, you know, Gabby Carl, gold medalist, Kristen Pavlisko, they were freshmen as well. And they won a national championship in 2018. So just because you're a freshman doesn't mean you don't have talent. You just got to put it all together at the right times. Brown inside the box. Robbins, the Wiley senior. Nesbeth, a new role for her this season as the number six. First line of defense before the back line. And Nesbeth, who is a proficient scorer of the ball herself, still trying to find ways to be able to be versatile in that role. She's done a nice job so far for Brian Pinsky this season. Garcia has shown flashes of life, not just tonight, but early on in the season against a pair of SEC opponents. South Carolina on the road for Florida State, then the Georgia Bulldogs. Garcia was dynamite. Finally registered a goal against the Gators last weekend as a foul and a knock going down there in a heap was Heather Gilchrist. Fullback trying to cover a lot of ground, trying to chase down these FSU defenders and does not get the ball at all. and trips up the cleats of Gilchrist. So uh, all about 12, 15 yards, maybe outside the 18 yard box here, Aria for Florida State to try and cash in on a set piece. Florida State's known for having their backliners come in and get some headers. Lauren Flynn being one of them. You see Gilchrist already getting an opportunity. They're not afraid to use that size to battle for positioning here on these set pieces. It won't be Nesbeth instead. Nice swanger towards the back post. And deflected away at the last moment. Great emergency defending to help Sullivan keep the ball out of the net by her back line. Nice one. There's been extremely active on the set pieces so far. She just has tremendous range. And she, the ball just curls and bends extremely well for Jenna. Can put the ball wherever she wants. And she has certainly proved to be an all-around striker and, and shooter. Hodgepodge right in front of the goal. They tried the same thing with Gilchrist, and this time it went on right on goal, but just a couple of Eagles were there to clear it. Now FGCU trying to transition quickly. Great ball across. Nice job by EY just shutting down a potential cross by Kaufman. This is where you have to defend against the Eagles. This is what they've been really successful at, turning the tables, going on the run on counters. Nice one, wins the 1v1 against LeBay. Long ball. Olsen called for the foul. Beata Olsen, the junior from Sweden, transferred from the University of Florida a couple seasons ago where she scored seven goals. Then last year for Florida State, leading scorer with 14 of them. Coach Penske told us before today's game, they're trying to get Beata to feel more comfortable within his system. Now Brown, how about the footwork? Soft touch to Nesbeth. And a delicate pass now back to Wen. Jody's gonna be a player you're gonna see. If you ever see the Jamaican national team, you gotta keep your eyes on her and there's the reason why. She doesn't have just probably the best speed probably in college soccer. I mean, if it's a track meet, good luck trying to catch her and trying to beat her to the line. But you just see the technical ability, the skill, working around defenders. Probably some of the best here on this Florida State roster, bar none. One of the young stars in CONCACAF playing for that Jamaican national team. She registered a goal against the Gators on Sunday. Like 
And for Jody Brown, who continues to try and think of her performance, she's been wonderful for Brian Penske. And for more on the sophomore, here is Emily. Yeah. You mentioned her goal against Florida, and when I spoke with Penske about it, he said no one was harder. <laughs> Layout for that close call. Jody was no, no one was harder on herself than Jody was after that Auburn game. She had a few good opportunities, but Brian Penske told me that all of the best strikers have to have amnesia to some extent. He said, you know, you can't look at the last play and lose yourself. You have to look at every opportunity and keep pushing. And she got that break against the Gators, and she is on for a good season. Yeah, no doubt Emily is Brown right here with the touch. Tried a little shimmy to get around number 18, Nellie Nygren. To Emily's point about amnesia last season, Jody Brown, I mean, how could she forget how good she was in the NCAA tournament for Florida State? There was a stretch where she scored in every single game leading up to the College Cup. Yeah, three-game goal streak in, the, in that tournament, Ari, and she was just on fire you know, against those teams that came, hit, unfortunately, here to Tallahassee to try and knock off the Seminoles, and Jody Brown just took it to them. South Alabama, SMU, Pepperdine, they all felt the effects of Jody Brown. Nesmith into positive territory for Florida State. Couldn't wait her pass just right there and now FGCU on the counter. And that's the danger you have. If you have a high press, that's the thing about Jody Brown. That's That goes right into her wheelhouse. This ball, Isla Bay, controlled, brought down. But Nesbeth runs onto it. And just to finish the point, just that that's where she can really use that straight line speed that's, you know, unmatched against most competition here in the entire country. And that's really how she was able to capitalize and score in the NCAA tournament that helped the Seminoles advance. There's one again to Brown. One touch from Robbins looking for Garcia dealt with by Elverson. Confidence Flynn plays with getting up the pitch. Right through the center, clips it onto her left and she wins a set piece here for Florida State. Flynn working against Erica Chippa. Chippa coming in from that top of that formation. Just get a little handsy right there. Wasn't just the leg, got a little handsy to start with to try and turn keep Flynn's shoulders closed towards the toward the crowd, but then was able to get the foot in, which drew the penalty for sure. So now Florida State will be on the other side of the box, about that same distance, about 15 yards out. As Chippa looks on, Florida State, they've threatened a little bit. Here in the first half, still looking for a very good look. That's a good ball from Nyswanger, the header flicked on. Last touched by a player in blue, it will be a corner. Another one for Florida State. The fifth of this first half. Nyswanger's set pieces have come in kind of more line drive-ish. That one, a nice little rainbow bender towards the far side. Check my tally there, Trevor, only four corner kicks for Florida State. Regardless, Nyswanger has been busy. Another outswinging ball from the left side. Pretty good one. Towards the back post, running onto it, is Brown, evades a defender. Nice outlet pass. Now Jenna, again towards the back post. Oh, the header. Garcia. Rocking the headband there. Boy, way from out from long distance was nice Swanger to get on the far side. And Garcia just has to get elevate herself just a little bit more to get that ball down. But she pays respect to Nicewanger for setting her up. A little self-note to her, next time I got you. Freshman from Vegas, 52 minutes against the Gators and that aforementioned goal. Robbins took a little bit of a ricochet shot. 
on that first ball. But gets up and seems to be okay. Take it. An FGCU program who was picked second in the preseason A Sun polls. Only Lipscomb, the defending champions of the A Sun, were picked higher. Eagles so far have had some struggles on the road. They haven't won either of their road games at UCF or USF. They've struggled some defensively, but offensively, offensively, they've scored in each of their first five games. That man, Jim Blankenship, looking for win number 170. Olsen surveys the top of the 18, chips it to Garcia. One touch, positive territory. Nice swanger, couldn't finish. Sullivan, well done. Jumping to her left. And again, the reigning A Sun, goalkeeper of the week. It's a nice job by Olsen to, cr to flip the script. Flip the field of play. And Nicewanger, I don't think, just gets enough on that. Just keeps it on the ground here. Sullivan, excellent first move to her left on the near-sided post. So, so far, halfway, almost halfway through this first half, you see you getting a little bit better, you know, trying to, you know, understanding the situation. Not exactly playing completely with 11 back. But they've done a nice job monitoring Florida State and just shutting down angles, just shutting down those easy look shot opportunities. Lynn knocks it up ahead. Scarpelli dispossessed. Here come the Knowles. Nice swung, push to the back, stoppage of play. We might have our first booking. We do. Look, shove in the back here. Could have been either one, either Paradis or Scarpelli. It was Scarpelli indeed. And for Scarpelli, that's already her third yellow card of the season. So a couple more, and she's looking at taking the next game off when that occurs. She has been really, you know, key, and that's, you know, you mentioned some of the defensive struggles, and they made a bit of a change. They had Lauren Dwyer, a freshman out of Kingston, Massachusetts, you know, start for them earlier in the season for those first couple games, but you know now they've kind of put Libby Elverson back on the line. She's at the left fullback position tonight, or I'm sorry, the right fullback position, right fullback position where she's been, and it just gives them a little bit more experience. Elverson, a four-year uh, transfer out of Drake, has a lot of experience, has with a lot of goals and assists. But you know, you need some of that veteran leadership to come through. A lot of transfer students on this team. So you want to put some experience back there for players understanding all areas of the pitch and knowing what to do. And it really worked out for FGCU in the last game against FAU to find their first shutout of the season. Yeah, Coach Blankenship told us he's got 11 freshmen as well that he brought in. And it's, a, it's going to be a challenge for FGCU. Again, they made four straight NCAA tournaments, got to the second round and really established themselves as a powerhouse in the A Sun, but the last couple of years have, have been a challenge for Coach Blankenship. Maybe some of that's just retooling. They do like their soccer down in Fort Myers. A very successful athletic program that FGCU has been able to build really in all sports. Who could forget Dunk City, in the men's NCAA tournament. Right. A number of years back as a Cinderella story. They've had some good baseball teams in the past that have made some regionals. Yeah, you mentioned the 11 freshmen, but you mentioned the transfers, eight transfer students. There's 19 new players this year alone, Aria, that are trying to figure themselves out. You know, they've played very admirably. I know that they haven't seen the results they've wanted, but they have played fairly stiff competition in the state of Florida. More giveaway, LeBay does well inside the box. She's through on her left, her shot hits the crossbar. Perhaps Roque got her fingertips on it to just push it up. A shaky moment by the Seminole back line. 
it leads to a corner. Wow, LeBay almost had a moment. After Louis Lilbeck, Ashley LeBay is the most dangerous player on FGCU. She did this to USF and set up Lilbeck for a goal. You have to be careful, and she is just so good challenging for the ball. And she will make you pay and almost made Florida State pay. Very close off the crossbar. Sophomore from Lake Worth. Warren Flynn, shaky moment there for a player that's had better moments. Substitution coming for FGCU. Liam Melanson into the game. And Erica Chippa out. It's the second corner kick here for FGCU. Put in a dangerous spot, but Florida State clears the line. Seminoles out shooting the Eagles 7-2 so far. But the Noles only able to convert two shots on goal out of the seven. Long cross, looking for number four, Barry. Been impressed with FGCU's ability to get forward, to transition quickly. These last five minutes in particular, Ari, they've really put Florida State on their heels. Here's again by LeBay, just excellent job getting her cleats in the dirt a little bit there to elevate and challenge Christina Roque. It's a little bit under pressure. Roque, though, very calm, poised, and just got her hand up. Now when wins the 1v1 duel, Garcia hammering her way in. A sledgehammer against the back line. See the outstanding freshman there. A couple of subs though now too for Florida State. One of the young stars, Emma Bissell from the United Kingdom. And you can't mention Bissell without also mentioning how good Maria Alagoa has been in her career so far in Tallahassee. Last year, Florida State had an embarrassment of riches coming off the bench. Brian Penske used those words exactly. He's still trying to find a few players to come off that are on his non-starting 11. That can impact the game the way that other players did. Nice shot there from Nesbeth. Couldn't catch it quite cleanly towards the goal. But Nesbeth was a player coming off the bench last year. Yuji Zhao, a player coming off the bench for Florida State. Nice swanger coming off the bench for Florida State. Who fills in those roles this season? Admittedly, by Brian Penske, he's got a smaller roster. Only had 16 players available against the Gators on Sunday. And everybody played. Everybody getting some reps in, and you can afford to do that given you know, the fact that they were able to get out to a lead and then in the second half really put it on. But certainly you're going to have to empty the, empty the bench for that. Nice Swanger now to Brown. Again, nice Swanger trying to stay with it. FGC LeBay, oh, she's been unbelievable so far in this first half. Maybe the best player on the pitch for either team. Yeah, she is just really, really elite at dribbling around backs, and as you saw there, through. Sophia Wen, the freshman. But just their closing speed, and, and, you, and look, you're going to get a test from Florida State, you know, no matter what, when you come up here or wherever you're playing. But look, this team is playing out of, in Fort Myers, probably one of the hottest parts of the country, so their conditioning is really top-notch. And, you know, Tallahassee and all of Florida, you're going to get the most elite athletes in probably the best shape. But that's certainly a staple for Jim Blankenship and what he wants to do. You know, he wants to be a really well-conditioned team. How about that run from Flynn? Brown towards the back post, a shot. Sullivan again there. And Bissell on the rocket. First 15 minutes here, Aria really was all Florida State. They could really control their way. Walk the ball towards the box. Last 15 minutes, though, FGCU has had their chances, and they've kind of kept Florida State at bay and have kind of forced more quick shots and not spent as much time in the box. You know, that's what something Brian Penske wants to see his team do. They want to have numbers in the box and challenge and be more aggressive, but FGCU has done a nice job adapting 
as time has gone on here in these, this first 45. Good turn from Alagoa to Bissell. Now drop back. Florida State will work it around. It was EY. Now Gilchrist. The switch to win. Good touch, positive forward. LeBay closing quickly. Wen stays with it. Direct ball forward. Olsen has played so far the entirety of the first half. This is more what we saw from Florida State a year ago, the possession-oriented style. Interesting seeing Olsen now is kind of drift into the midfield and have Alagoa up top. Something Brian Pinsky has tried to do too with Olsen, sometimes with strikers, Trevor, as you've called many games, if you can get them earlier touches by withdrawing them into the midfield, it allows them to kind of grow into the match faster. And it gives them more familiarity and time with the ball. I mean, sometimes, you know, Olsen's at the top of the table or at the top of the formation. She's off the ball so much. And I think because she's a marked, she's really, because you have 14 goals, people are going to notice that. They're going to try and lock you down without the ball. So if you can get yourself some dribbling, that gets you a little bit more loose, a little bit more energy on how the ball is, you know, how you're feeling with the ball, how you're hitting the ball, striking it. It might be just the kind of formula that, you know, Beata Olsen maybe needs. Trevor, we know Olsen can put the ball in the back of the net. One of the fiercest strikers in the NCAA a season ago. Amelia Horton into the match for Florida State. I believe I also saw Caitlin Zappé run onto the pitch too. 14 and a half minutes left here in the first. Still nil-nil. FGCU has been hanging around. It's an excellent angle by Lauren Flynn of getting in front of Lilback. Having to go around her, the longer track, the longer distance, that's inc an incredible job to beat one of those elite strikers on the Matt Herman award list or watch list for later this year. LeBay towards the back post, ball is inside the six, Roquet quick off her line. Heads up play by Roquet. Sometimes as a keeper when you have an elite squad, you know, you get into that, maybe a habit of relying on your back line so much that you can, there's so much trust there that you know they're gonna make the right decisions, but sometimes you gotta take it upon yourself just to secure and leave no doubt. Gordon never got the support that she needed, does well to stay with. Alagoa onto her right. Knocks it forward to Zippe. Zippe towards the net. Sullivan again has been sure-handed in the first. The graduate Creighton transfer from Wheaton, Illinois. Just over, allowed just over a half a goal a game last year, which was tops and the A Sun. Florida State, I don't think, can be too happy right now in terms of the, you know, certainly the amount of challenges are okay, but the force with which those are coming with are just not exactly testing Sullivan too much. Go back. You why? Godlitz wants to receive again, does. Working against Bissell. Direct ball, headed back to LeBay again, 1v1 against Horton. Nice job by Horton. There's another player, you know, in a new role this year, Aria Amelia Horton, more of a forward last year as a freshman. Now she's getting an opportunity come off the bench, sub in for Sophia Wen these last couple of games, and a pretty good showcase against Florida on Sunday. Keeping the Gators at bay when the Gators did have opportunities with the ball, which were certainly few. She certainly locked things down and cleared the ball out to really reset the game. So another role, another role reversal of sorts for Florida State as they try and you know, go on this new journey with Brian Penske. Seminole Faithful, a good crowd tonight, trying to support their team. A 
11 minutes and 15 seconds left here in the first half. Still nil-nil between the Knolls and the Eagles. Nice swanger. Edge of the box, Olsen curling. Nobody home, and the Knolls had no runners. Olsen, who has starred with the Swedish youth national team, scored again against her former team on Sunday. Brian Penske thought, hey, maybe if she finds the net, that could open things up for a striker. You know the goal scorers, they're hungry for the ball to be able to score. And for Olsen, maybe that's just what she needed. They talked about having a second forward that could help her out up top. Maybe Jody Brown linking up with her to open up both star players' games. That was about 10 minutes left. That was something they tested out a little bit, I think, against Auburn Aria in their first home game. They put three in the back. So a few more numbers forward. And the only goal they scored was on the penalty kick. Heather Payne took. They were still trying to figure things out. They hit a lot of a lot of posts. They think they were known as the Iron Women that night, and unfortunately, that's not a good thing here in the game of soccer. Hitting too many posts and not enough knowledge. Wonderful ball there. And Olsen called off. That's tough for Florida State because I think if Olsen just lead, lets that go, Alagoa was running on from an onside position. And then she gets sandwiched for her efforts as well between those tall eagles on the back line. And again, I think it goes, to, I think it, you have to reflect that and see how, you have to appreciate how important timing is in this sport. Connecting those passes, staying on side to make it all come together is so difficult. Excellent turn from Olsen. Even better to find Bissell. Does Bissell see Horton? Instead, it's nice swanger. Dangerous left foot, trying to angle towards it. Here's Alagoa, she's dangerous from deep. Instead, opts for a cross and a flick on over the bar. Was that Zippe? It was Caitlin Zippe trying to Notch a goal for Florida State in the latter moments of the first half. About eight minutes and 45 seconds now left. We are deadlocked at 0-0. Lil back off and on is Gargiula. Kendall Gargiula, the freshman from North Fort Myers, Florida. Alagoa, Zippe, towards the corner, flag does well. With a left boot to Nesbeth. Leilani's played the entire first half so far, no break for her. Flynn, positive touches into the attacking third. That's a good ball, nice swanger onto her right. And again, FGCU has had the answer. When the ball gets inside the 18, they have gang defended, and they've been able to keep the ball out of the net. Another, Sullivan's been good too, Trev. Another four-year transfer coming through there. This time, Margaret Berry coming over from Boston University. Again, so it's another situation right there where it's another dangerous job by Lauren Flynn again, though. She has flown herself several times in this match, a couple of early on, and that was the first time in about... 30 or so minutes that we see Lauren Flynn really drawing the attention of the Eagles just enough to free up everybody else around her. But credit, as you say, Aria, to the Eagles of just getting in position of understanding where that ball's going and just cutting it off being a one-woman wall, whether it's been Scarpelli or Barry. They've done a nice job of not letting it get to Sullivan. Here comes Flynn again. She's been active. Up the center of the pitch. This time, Godlitz just got right in her grill. Literally, literally, Lauren Flynn ran into a wall right there. Nesbeth, Horton, stops in her tracks, now towards her left, drops it all the way back to Gilcrest. Roque being called into sweeper-keeper action. Now LeBay.
About six minutes left in the first half. Flynn's been really doing everything tonight, hasn't she? She's been in this, sometimes in the center to deny a crossing opportunity, flying up the center, now just interjecting herself, being the captain of that back line. Trevor, I've been impressed with the way FGCU has been able to not just defend, but also create some offense for themselves. Smart game plan. They've pressed Florida State selectively, but it's worked. I mean, look at the numbers right now. I mean, they're not all the way back behind the half yard line, the, the midfield line. They're literally staying with Florida State. It gives you added confidence knowing you can deal with that early pressure, that early wave of opportunities for Florida State. They've been able to learn on the fly. It just oozes confidence. And now they're able to play a little more freely. They've had a couple of opportunities. Ashley LeBay is really standing out. They haven't really gotten Louis Lilback, uh, yeah, Louis Lilback in yet to really get her involved with touches, but they've had their share, their share of time with the ball, which is highly impressive against the stiffest competition they faced all season. I gotta say, I've also been impressed with your ability to say Louis Lilback, <laughs> the efficiency that you've had that many times tonight. Look, I was, I was a sports director down in Sarasota, and occasionally I'd cover the Lightning, and they have a lot of Russian players, so that pronunciation really comes through for you when you have to <laughs> really try and pronunciate the Russian last names. I wonder if any hockey players have the last name LeBay. She's been dynamite. Number 17 on the pitch for FGCU has been a problem. She's very fully comfortable playing that, that left wing position. Suits her game completely well. She scored a couple, she scored a goal. I want to say it was against Southern Aria where she was way outside the box, right down the sideline and was able to score and get it over the keeper's head and into the goal. She has tremendous range with that left foot. And has already done a nice job with two goals and two assists, five games into the season. One of the more all-around players, I think, probably the best all-around player on FGCU's team. Three and a half minutes left here in the first half. Nice Alagoa. flick. Alagoa. Ball highlight reel material. Outside of the foot pass, now to Zepe. Zepe cuts it to her left, inside the box, towards the center. And again, Alagoa, left foot. Trying to feed Leb Lebdow. It was a really nice pass by Alagoa into the center of the box to find a freshman from Panama City Beach. Florida State find an opening. Find the first goal right before the end of the first half. Now 2.45 to play. Still nil-nil. Alagoa looks on, trying to receive a ball in a dangerous area. We have a stoppage of play, it seems like. Check that offside. The flag had gone up. I don't think it's, it's not exactly worry time yet for Florida State. I mean, you're out shooting the Eagles 11 to three right now. But again, you have to get more of those shots on goal. Only three of those 11 shots have reached Sullivan. But I think for Florida Gulf Coast, I think the key for them was just to really clog the center of the box, win the ball or clear it, and then just get Florida State's attackers off balance. And I think they've done a nice job to force those tough angle shots. And while Florida State has certainly, I think, gotten a little bit of time in the box, they really just haven't been able to Get him on goal. I think if you're Jim Blankenship, the fact that you see 0-0 nearing the end of the first half has got you jumping up and down a little bit right here. Have to feel good after the opening 45 minutes or so. I know he's sitting down right now, but I think I'd imagine he's definitely oh, no. you know, feeling like, okay, we're, we're in this game. We're here to win this game right now. Yeah, the first shutout of the year came against FAU on Sunday for FGCU. 89th minute thrilling goal by Paradis. Gave the Eagles their second win of the year. They've struggled defensively other than that. They've given up multiple goals in their other three contests. 
Here's Alagoa. Stopped in her tracks. Nice job by Helverson. LeBay, positive touch. To Lilback. And Godlitz was there too, Roquet. Hoping to find something as we trudge under a minute left here in the first. A lot of youth for Florida State out there right now as Brian Penske is trying to save his starters for that second half. Might be a chance for the Eagles here to get things going. Charge right back up with 30 seconds to go. though we will head to the break after 45 minutes. And it's nil-nil between Florida State and FGCU. Trevor, early thought. Uh, our team's performance, we're not changing anything going into the second half. Our approach is working and we're ready to get back out there. I bet they are. 45 minutes, you play like that, you lose to Florida State last year 4 nil in a game where Florida State had possession, something like over 85% of the game. In that first half, it was 69-31, so it's, a, it's still a heavy sided side weighted to Florida State, but that's at least improvement. And hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You gotta think, Trevor, if FGCU finds the opening goal, the confidence soars to another level. And if you're Florida State, and you score here in the first five, 10 minutes of the second half, you might be able to put that initial doubt that creeps right back into the heads of the Eagles players. And I think it might bring the Eagles out a little bit more higher, you know, because they're going to try and force it because they know they're so close and they would love to get out of here, obviously with the W, but to come away with a draw and still keep Florida State score winless at home, you know, five games into the season for FSU, that'd be something. This could be the opportunity for Florida State that they've been asking for. Brown fires, oh man. Leaned back. Put the ball on a hot air balloon and watched it rise. I think that's probably been the biggest area of improvement I think Florida State can work on with their shots, Aria. They have been, a, they, a lot of their shots have come way above the, not just above the crossbar, way above the crossbar. You see here, Jody Brown, yeah, she does lean a little bit back, doesn't drive the ball forward as much to keep it low. You saw towards the end of the half, Caitlin Zappay had one, you know, close to the six box. That went way over the crossbar. Florida State has got to get those shots down. Here's Garcia to her left. Blows by 15. Now inside the box, Beata Olsen. And again, Knowles just can't find that final touch. They do retain possession. Hard to find white kids in that box. Robbins, Nesbeth. Haven't said Clara Robbins' names a whole heck of a lot here in the first 45 or so. Maybe that changes. Brown clips it on, Sullivan again just picks it out of the sky. She had to have a tight grip on that. That ball almost went through. Those gloves latching onto the ball on the very outside. A couple of Florida State attackers following up behind her on the near side. So good energy though for Florida State here coming out of the gate in this second half. I think they recognize the urgency here of wanting to get, I mean obviously the first goal in general is such a huge benefactor for any team in soccer, but here for Florida State, knowing the situation, trying to capitalize. Brown barreling ahead inside the 18. Robbins under her left foot, and there's the opener for Florida State. Who else? Clara Robbins, 1-0 to the goals. sure if she heard your, you say her name, Aria, but she had some sort of motivation coming in with that one. Clara Robbins, seventh year vet for Florida State. And it all starts here with Jody Brown. You cannot allow Jody Brown to just run with the ball like that. She's going to figure things out. And it goes in between the legs of Libby Helverson, and I think it actually deflects off her. Yes, it went on the inside of her left knee. That minor little adjustment off the ball, that deflection, I think fools Sullivan. And it gets rewarded for Florida State. B 
big, big goal here, coming out strong in the second half. In her 92nd career game as a Seminole, goal number 13 of Clara Robbins. And the Knowles might not be done just quite yet. Garcia now, oh, deflected out. Should be a corner, it is. The Knowles are feeling it now. See Garcia, the freshman, showing some nice little physicality there, Aria. Nice job of leaning off the defender to create a little extra separation, a little bounce off there. Now the Eagles are on their heels. Swanger, header over the bar. One note to make, by the way, Oni Echegini, we hadn't seen her in the first half. She was on national team duty with Nigeria, playing September 3rd and September 6th, and so didn't know what her availability status would be tonight. Be surprised if we saw her with FSU here this evening. She's got the first goal of the season for Florida State. So a nice little welcoming coming over from Mississippi State. A lot of Seminoles with international duty. Something they're very proud of here in Tallahassee. Paula Bay once again flying up the wing, trying to get her teammates involved, looking for a little back. The Seminoles have so many players that represent so many different countries for their national teams. Again, as we mentioned, something FSU under Krikorian was very proud of and wants to continue under Penske. Right, Emily? That's, that's right. Brian Penske told me every single one of our internationals is involved with their prospective national teams. So that means they're not just international kids. They're national team players. They're high-level soccer players, high-level brains. And they bring in different cultures, personalities, different styles of play. And these kids, when they come from other countries, there's no softball or baseball or American football. There's just international football. And that's why they, that's why they come here, and that's what they grow up with. About Emily using the football term for soccer. Some might say the proper proper way of saying it. A lot of people here in the states would disagree. They would be a fan of her in England. I promise you that. <laughs> but a good point nonetheless. As Florida State's Heather Payne, by the way, playing with the Irish national team for World Cup qualifiers against Finland and Slovakia just last week. Nice work by Roque. Pressure situation. Handle it calmly as she usually does. So you see the Eagles here in these last couple of possessions going over the top, long ball play. So they've been really working the flanks. You know, they worked the flanks as much as they could in the first half. Now they're trying to go a little long ball going over the top of that rather young Florida State back line, trying to get a chance. Nice longer, turns it, fire, blocked. This touch though by Barry. Elverson got in the way of that one. Here's Nesbeth. Talk about internationals. Plays for the Bermuda national team. Sends that one out for a FGCU throw. So Leilani Nesbeth, who has starred for Florida State now for a couple of years. Emily, what you got? Well, I spoke with Penske about her, and he said, you know, you talk about an intellectual player. Leilani has been an attacker her whole life. On about day three of preseason, I said, hey, you're going to be our defensive center midfielder. And now she's played about four games in that role. And I tell you what, she's a stud. She can play this game for a long time in this position because of her brain, athleticism, and feet. And they've allowed her to step into this role seamlessly. Without a doubt, we know we talked to Leilani earlier this season, and it was going to be a new role. She was a little nervous about playing this num the number six position. Matter of fact, on the first day at fall camp, she hadn't met Penske really yet, and Penske says, you're going to play center back. And Nesbeth, who scored seven goals in her career, was like, okay. 
But then he watched Nesbitt on the first day of practice, and he says, there's no way we're leaving you back there. You have to get forward. So they found the optimal role, which the number six plays defensively and withheld, but can have the option of getting forward. And Nesbitt has been fantastic for Florida State so far. I mean, she's her work rate's been outstanding. Uh, her distribution has been outstanding. Brian Pinsky has had nothing but great things to say. And Trevor, she talked to Jalen Howell a little bit on how to play that position, too. Who better, right? Who right. better than Jalen Howell, the Mac Herman Trophy Award winner? But it's not only that. To build off that point, Arya, you know, sure, Nesbitt was an attacking midfielder. But guess who she went against every single game she played in that spot? The sixth. So she knows how to you know, to face that position. She knows how to deal with that position. So you're studying, you're looking at film, you're trying to understand what makes a six good, a defensive midfielder good. So, and yeah, you still have the freedom. And she played obviously with Jalen Howell last several, couple of years here. And so she understand what, who better obviously to learn from than an elite middle holding midfielder than Jalen Howell. So she's very, not only familiar with playing against that position, but knows somebody who's done it probably better than anybody. Brown, can she get a second for Florida State? To the feet now of EY. Ron EY also in new territory this season for Florida State. Great defense. There's Helverson again. 15, Libby Helverson, the graduate transfer from Drake. Knowles looking for a second. Early moments of the second half. Nice swanger. Brown cutting it back, poked away. Again, okay, you just see nowhere really for Olsen to go, and that's where you just have to maybe create something on your own, a quick cut to the left side there. I know maybe that's not Beata's strongest foot on the left, but you just get frozen, and it just allows the defense to get set and get into other spots, you know, to wall off and guard other potential threats. Here comes Flynn again. It's been a menace so far tonight. Robbins, the goal scorer. Nice swanger. Staying with it is Florida State. When? When strong. Shot here over the crossbar. Just whistles over the bar. That was Garcia. And you see the flair and the speed and the physicality that Garcia can play with. Yeah, she had a chance close in that first half. Off a cross on the header that just went a little above the bar. This one a little bit closer as well with the right foot. A good bender, not far off. About 34 minutes left in this one. Knowles lead 1-0. Seminoles hoping to advance their winning streak at home. Weren't beaten at all last season. Now here's Brown on the outside, cutting it back in. Pass intercepted, intended for Robbins. Nice job by the Eagles of getting numbers behind the ball. Roberts, knowing she has help behind her, nice, nice job of interjecting. On to the left side, finishing it! Goal number two for Florida State! And Garcia finally finds the net! Well, Kenny Sullivan's gonna want to have this one back. Shot comes in. On the far side, nice swanger. Oh, that's all Sullivan. That's one she could definitely have back. Right near the top of the corner, a funny bounce a little bit. That's a really tough save to make, no doubt about it. You have to try and analyze quickly, judge where that ball is going to bounce up, and just get mitts on it. And unfortunately for Sullivan, Garcia was right on the other side. Easy tap-in goal. FGCU trying to respond very quickly, but for Garcia, her second career goal in as many matches. Knocks off Florida with a goal. Now against FGCU, might we start to see the, the clock turn here for the freshman? Two goals and an assist here. Less than two full games, she's found a rhythm. And now the floodgates are opening up, up for the Seminoles. 
Eagles a little bit out of sorts right now. Trying to play some double teams. Here comes Robbins. Nice play across. Garcia's got one. Oh, she was looking for a second. <laughs> Just denied. Just a quality piece of attacking right now for Olivia Garcia. It's an excellent turn to the near side. One of her strongest shots thus far. Excellent feed by Nyswanger as well. Just a nice little give and go. Excellent turn. Sullivan doing a nice job of getting in the perfect spot. Look at that great heel work. And through two Eagle defenders. A lot of power in that shot. Florida State doubles its lead. It's 31 minutes to go. Florida State felt like if it could get that first one, things might open up. And now FGCU finds itself down. Multiple goals. The confidence you were playing with undoubtedly has started to creep backwards just a little bit. What was supposed to happen so to speak, is starting to happen. Who responds here for the Eagles? Is it LeBay? Can they find one to cut the lead in half? Now you just need, you need your stars to really show up and empty the gas tank because now Florida State can just go back to what they have used for years and years, winning national championships, and that's play keep away, building from the back, protecting the ball. Towards the back post, Garcia. Brings it down, one touch to Robbins. Does Robbins have a second? Yeah. Yes, he does, 3-0. It's all Florida State here in the second. Nice shot, Clara. Really, it worked. Team offense for Florida State. Garcia does a nice job settling the ball down. There's not enough numbers for FGCU. Only a few, four or so in the box around that area. Too much space. Giving Robbins a clear view of that far corner. Excellent job. Pinpoint accuracy for Robbins and the goals. Didn't take long for Robbins to find the score sheet this season and then to find her second. As LeBay has her pass deflected, intercepted by Flynn. You had to think too at halftime, right? Some of the talk was, hey, Clara, need you more involved. Remember in that second 45. Whatever halftime speech Brian Penske just delivered to his team, I think you have to put on repeat for every game going forward. Because whatever he said, whatever they talked about in the locker room has really paid off here in the first 15 minutes. Three goals for the Seminoles. for the season as she gets the ball right here. Corrals it well. Looks to distribute. Muscles off. Godlets. As FGCU now will want to transition. Robin said, look, I didn't want to leave Florida State with the way everything went down. It just felt too abrupt. I wasn't ready. I had committed to coming back. Coach Penske kind of accepted us as all his family, and I was impressed with the way that he heard us out, the way that he took input, and that for me was what sealed the deal. So the seventh-year senior from Stafford, Virginia, ranked top 30, by the way, by top drawer soccer, top 100 players in the country. She had unfinished business. She said, I want to play one more year with my friends, and I want to get a second national title. Would be her third of her career. She didn't get to play in the first one. That's right. You know, that's one of those things that can maybe eat at you as a player. like, wait, I have something left here. And she was certainly in line to be a team captain, and she is, along with Jenna Nyswanger. So there's, there was, and obviously with a lot of departures coming, you needed some veteran leadership still on this club to guide your way, needing some championship medal. There's a little back. Nice moment here for FGCU. Little back caught in between a cross and a shot. Really trying to go from distance, trying to break that tie that she's currently got in terms of all-time goals for FGCU. But yeah, that's the, really the first time we've really seen her with the ball in a 
solid sequence. And, and that's just the that's just the struggle you're going to get against an elite team like Florida State. The matchups just really aren't in your favor as a forward. You're really not going to have too many chances if Florida State is really clicking on all cylinders with possession. Three second half goals to take a commanding 3 0 lead. If you're just joining us, you miss some fireworks here in the second half. Robbins got us started. Then it was Garcia, the freshman. And then Robbins again. Got an age difference of about six years between the two, by the way. From the youth to the veterans. It's not a deep Florida State team. Only about 19 players available to play all season. That's something that going towards ACC play, they're going to have to try and figure out managing minutes, the wear and tear. But Trevor, you and I chatted earlier with Brian Penske about they just had a 10-day off period where a lot of players got to rest their legs. The way the schedule shook out. Allowed for as that flag goes up, allowed Florida State to kind of have an extended break. They scrimmaged some, but sometimes just allowing players to rest and to get away from soccer can be a good thing too. And I think it's really critical, I think, for this team in particular, Aria, have to have that break, because every team pretty much gets one, I think, in a little bit of an extended break at some point during the season. But I think for this team specifically, given that it's a new head coach, you're coming off a national championship. Okay, how do we how are we going to attack this season? How do we how do we maintain the level of success that we have with all the changes that we've had in this offseason? And I think that came at such an excellent time coming off the game against Auburn, where they felt they took it as a loss. They had the lead, gave up a goal in the second half, and probably didn't play up to par with what Auburn was presenting themselves with. So they took that as a loss and they recollected themselves, watched a whole bunch of tape, scrimmaged a lot, figured things out of what they want to do going forward. Now that's going to change at other points in the season, but I think for a team that wants to still maintain that dominance, needed this break probably at, at a crucial point here so that it can carry on for the rest of their non-conference schedule and then when it really matters most, against the ACC teams. Here coming is Nyswander goes down. Most of Florida State's fan base was rightfully tuned in to Florida State and LSU from New Orleans on Sunday. But on that same day, Florida State soccer goes to Gainesville. They score five goals after the extended break of 10 days. Maybe found some answers offensively. Find players that work better in certain combinations. Coach Penske mentioned going too high at times. Maybe Florida State's starting to turn a corner themselves under Penske because it is a learning process for coach and team. Yeah, and I think what Brian's done a nice job, he's like treaded lightly, he's dipped his toe into the pool, and now he's putting a foot, then maybe up to the knee, but slowly but surely. He ain't just cannonballing himself. Here I am, I'm, a, I'm making splashes and waves here. You know, he understands that, you know, to try and keep, you know, to go from the top, you, have, you can't go any higher. You have to stay there at the top because everyone else is coming for you. So he's treated this such so delicately. And over time, as they get more comfortable with him, it'll really pay off dividends. And I think they're really seeing the response. And if nothing else, these last two games, they've come out of halftime firing. Speaking of firing, up the pitch, Jody Brown on all cylinders. On her right foot, deflected crossbar, second effort high. Oh, Jody Brown I thought she had a moment. Margaret Berry just getting a limb right in the way in the nick of time. Again, space just gets a limb up off the crossbar, and then the volley by Olsen too high off the bar. Actually went off both Berry and Scarpelli. I was about to say, how did that ball even hit the crossbar off the first deflection? Well, there's your answer. Florida State mass substitutions to try and keep some legs fresh in a 3-0 game. Alan 
Noah, Bissell, Zapay all coming in. Orton as well on the back line. LeBay, the speed. And Roquet, quick off the line. You just see the talent right there from LeBay, just how pure she is with those crosses. That's the signature part of her game. She is so precise with where she wants to place the ball. She just needs someone to come on, on it, come on the ball and just put a touch on there. But a nice job by Roquet. It's coming off the line just ever, just ever so slightly. Yeah, if you're an A-Sun team, school, A-Sun fans, anything like that, Ashley LeBay is certainly vying, I think, for one of those conference players of the year. Just on the raw talent and sheer performance that she's been putting on early in this 2022 season. Gordon in a dangerous spot, jockeying against two FGCU pressers. Ends up giving the ball back it's just to like, the Eagles. It's just like throwing an incompletion when the pressure's on you. Just get rid of it. Don't, don't cause a turnover. Kaufman, no one in the area in blue. Decked in all garnet. Christina Roquet, easy money. The confidence Roquet plays with. And how can you not? Every big moment Florida State has had in an ACC or NCAA tournament run seemingly has been Christina Roquet stoning or icing somebody on the penalty kick line. The last two seasons, she's gotten to the national championship game. She's been the lead woman in that. She just has such a, a steadiness and level-headedness she, you know, she welcomed the challenge. You know, this is really a year for her where she's got to be more vocal, and I think she expressed that. First day at camp, she came out and underst understood that role with such a much younger back line than what she was used to first coming in. You know, now she's a junior. So her communication level is now at a much more higher urgency, you know, in taking on that leadership role of being someone in net with a voice. That's what goalkeepers have to do. You sit back there usually all day and you know, you're not talking to anybody. That's when you have to have your moment of saying, hey, listen up, this is what I'm seeing out there. You're almost like a coach. You're a, essentially a player coach out there. An active Thursday night here in the sports world. Happy NFL opening day, by the way, Trevor. Don't turn your TV sets over to Thursday night football just yet, folks. We've been seeing some fireworks here right now. Give it 20 minutes. <laughs> Bills and Rams going at it in LA. <laughs> Buffalo Bills have scored the first touchdown of the NFL season, up 7 0. Missile, nice job working with the box. On the end of it, Robbins. Does she have a third one? Oh, saved off the line. And you see a little skip from Robbins. She thought she had a hat trick. Going to demand every hat that's in this stadium here in the Seminole Soccer Complex if it did go in. Excellent save by Sullivan. Robbins has found a home in the box. I just love the movement of the ball, Aria. I think that's just been, I think that's changed a little bit here in this second half. Florida State's done a nice job of connecting their passes much better around the box and inside the box. Getting more runs and opening things up. Throw for FGCU. Foul going the other way. Robbins has been so influential tonight for Florida State, especially in this second 45. Trevor inches away from a three-piece. Beautiful touch with the left foot behind her as well. Excellent deke. So you see it here again, just working the ball and keeping it going in that momentum too. Just a little bit too square right on Sullivan. And Sullivan still had to work her way diving left. So yeah, Robbins was really off the stat sheet for the whole season here. Didn't have a goal or an assist. Had nine shots entering tonight. But following up the first goals of the year by Jody Brown and Yada Olsen against the Gators, Robbins gets her first goals here tonight. Now she's in a tie for the lead. <laughs> the 
Garcia, nice one. Bissell cuts it back. Still Bissell. Bissell towards the end line. Ball trickles out. It'll be a goal kick. Strong defending by the Eagles. Muscling Bissell off the line. And now a couple subs coming in for Florida State. Melina Dakari, Olivia Labdow. You're up 3 0. Nice chance to get some younger players into the match. Russell in for FGCU, as is Chippa. The Knowles have three goals all in the second half. A quiet first, looking for a fourth. Sullivan there in the breadbasket. See Caitlin Zappé getting significant time this season. We spent it, spent a lot of time on the bench last year. But did start all 11 games back in the fall of 2020, in that COVID year. Showing her shot, she can certainly drive it with the left foot on the outside. Up next for Florida State is a match at Rice in the city of Houston this Sunday, September 11th. Then the Knowles go to Boston College on the 16th, come back for two home matches against Louisville and Clemson on the 22nd and 25th. Both of those can be viewed right back here on ACC Network Extra. And for FGCU, they've got a home game against FIU on Sunday. Then they go to Queens College in Charlotte and then play at Liberty later on this month. Kari, not able to get there, does stay with it actually, nice work. Continues her run, it's deflected though to Sullivan. And Trevor, when we talked to Coach Penske earlier today, he, he mentioned, look, I wish we had played more than just four games to date. It's the way the schedule shook out. We don't have a lot of data on our team, on how we play together, on how we fit together. And right now games are Florida State's best friend and doing it while winning is also an added bonus. Yeah, I mean, we did mention how that break, though, I think really benefited Florida State, but yeah, now's the time for them to really get into a flow with game action, as you say, to get more details and data to really analyze things a little bit more in depth. I do think, though, it, that, that break does come at a point where they really need to work out some kinks and iron things out a little bit more. That way they can progress the season going forward now. But yeah, the, you know, the, sometimes the best way to figure things out is while you're doing it on the fly. And one thing I know about this this bunch of Florida State Seminole women athlete, uh, these athletes, is that they love playing the game of soccer, and that's what you know, that's what they wake up for, that's what they get out of bed for. That's why they come here every day, working hard to put and build it all into this game here, and then the next one after them. I think what makes Florida State so special, Aria, you know, they obviously have talent. They're really intelligent. But I think, you know, you also have to have the will to win and not give up. And even if a pass doesn't connect exactly how you do it or you see a turnover, the ball's coming back the other way, you don't give up on the play and you're still working as if you're still in possession and they're still taking over. They're not just putting on the brakes and retreating. They still put their foot on the gas. They regroup if they need to. But they just keep on pursuing. They're always, they seem to always be in attack mode, whether they're playing offense or defense, they just want the ball. It's the only way you win games. About 14 and a half minutes to play here in Tallahassee. Knowles three, FGCU nil. A non-conference slate and matchup between the Knowles and the Eagles. Had another non-conference game playing right now on ACC Network on the national TV side of things between two familiar rivals. 
North Carolina and Duke deciding to step out of conference play and play each other. It still counts as a real game, just not towards the ACC standings. Being told Carolina won, Duke nil, about 10 minutes to play in the first half in Durham. Torrey Hansen gives the heels the edge early in that rivalry game. We know the history of Duke and Carolina. But both of those teams are coming off losses against UCLA, who beat both teams on their home pitches. And so that, that game is huge for rankings-wise because they really can't advance any higher than two and three. Until UCLA gets beaten by a lesser opponent, they can't advance, so you have to get that advantage against one another. And do it this early on in the season is a great opportunity. And swinging ball towards the six, had it out. Alago again, oh, cuts it inside. Now towards goal, a scrum, a fourth not there for Florida State. Was that Dakari or that was Bissell on the end of it? Just an excellent job here, closing the gap. Again, Sullivan needs to get her hands on that. She has to grasp that ball. Looked like that was Nelly. Nigren there, defending and denying Bissell a goal. Nice job by Alagoa, recovering, keeping the ball in play. Here's Bissell, across the face of goal. Cleared off the line. Bissell's been pretty good tonight. And as she's been a bright spot for Florida State this season. Didn't get a lot of chances last year to shine with the deep roster the Knowles had, but the talent's there. There's no question about it. He saw the run on there. Certainly run downhill fast and cross the ball. Set up a, a number nine. That top striker but certainly is capable of putting one and flicking one on herself. She had a goal against Georgia. That was an amazing flick on goal. I don't think she, she I think she actually said she didn't expect that. Designed that to exactly go in. Hard knock there for Robbins. Play on, says the official. And here comes FGCU. Melanson. Great run by Melanson. So an aggressive tackle there by number 19. Crowd did not appreciate that whatsoever, but hey, got to admire the spirit. When you're down three goals. You got to get one back in any way you can. You take another look. Yeah, I mean, that's really close. I think she pumps the brakes just in time. She did, if she doesn't do that, that's certainly a foul. Maybe even a yellow card, to be perfectly honest. That was an aggressive challenge, and Robbins felt the effects. Crowd coming back to life. Final 10 minutes or so from Tallahassee with an old lead at 3-0. It's been a pleasure. Bringing this one to you, Arya Masudi, Trevor DeGroat, Emily Peters, our entire crew. Florida State's second home game of the season and its fifth contest. Things will ramp up here over the next month or so as they move back into ACC play. The Wolves were in a bind trying to find teams to play with the schedule. New coach have to create new matchups yourself and make new agreements. Penske was able to go in and deep into his, reach into his SEC bag and find some opponents to play early. South Carolina and Georgia from Penske's days back in Tennessee. And now it starts to get real for FSU. Non-conference play slowly wrapping up. Trevor, five games in, what have you seen from Florida State? What do you think they have as they continue to evolve in 2022? I think, you know, these last couple, these last two games, this game and against Florida, you know, you see, Aria, the way they come out of the half is really impressive. They've scored seven goals in the second halves here of these last two games. So they do a nice job with, with halftime adjustments. You know, so that's really key in games, you know, that you're going to have to have against the Carolinas and the Dukes and Virginias, you know, Clemson coming up, you know, who's had a pretty good run as of late in the ACC. You know, you're going to have more road games this year than home games. So you have to have and make adjustments on the fly. And when you can do that, you know, you're going to keep, you know, you're going to keep teams off balance. You're already dangerous. You're already immensely talented. 
But if you can recognize what's going on in the first half and then make the necessary adjust adjustments for the second 45, I think that's a, a huge thing in the growth of this this team as the season goes on. Penske's had success everywhere he's been. Maryland, Tennessee. Looking forward at Florida State. Bissell shoulders off the defender. Still Bissell towards the right post. It's absolutely sensational for Emma Bissell. had a little extra meaning to it. Emma Bissell from outside the 18 goes far post. Excellent curl, Ben kisses the far post. And then she points to the sky. I think to the newest member of heaven, Aria, Queen Elizabeth, I think that one was for you. Perhaps. That I think meant a lot to the English international right there, Aria. I mean, you know, she's certainly been playing really motivated tonight. Had a nice little, a lot of open space right there. And several times tonight, I think she's really been flying up the flank. Trevor, I knew it would be a matter of time before you made me laugh. It was game one. Hey, man, that, it's, it's. Point know, it to the sky, Queen Elizabeth. That one's for I, you. I saw it, man. I saw All right. I saw her. I think that, I think that was one for the Queen. God save the Queen, am I right? Yeah. I think she's. I think she's being saved right now for sure. That was certainly a that was certainly breaking news today. Man. It, was, it was really a lot of England and the world. I think certainly watching that. Three nothing, Florida State. Excuse me, four nothing. Seven minutes to play. Roque stands on the final few moments ticking off. Again, another goal in the second half here. Florida State just really just keep the they keep the foot on the gas pedal. There's just no stopping this team. When they find a way to keep keep going and scoring goals that just is infectious for them. You know, Florida and FG, I mean, you know, the Eagles, you know, they're a team that, you know, when they want to play the style that they want to play, they're free. You know, they they want to be able to outshoot their opponents. They want to challenge you, really play fast. Go deep, you know, go towards the end line to really draw corners. They just really haven't had too many opportunities tonight. And when you just get off your game plan ever so slightly, you know, Florida State's going to make you really pay. They've been outstanding here in the second half. Five goals against Florida, four tonight now, all in this final 45. Who knows if Florida State's finding some answers. There were a lot of question marks about well, how would you transition from Kokori into Penske? How would the offense figure? I think it's very clear the Knolls want to press. They want to transition quickly. They want to be aggressive. And maybe you give up a few more goals as a result. Maybe your line's a little higher and opposing teams can get behind you a little easier. There's more space, but at the same time, the fireworks you have offensively, you might put up some gaudy offensive numbers. Well, you think about who they lost this past season, or I mean, you know, the team, I mean, last year's national championship team really ran through Jalen Howe. And why, I mean, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you though? I mean, she is, you know, she had so much range around the, around the pitch. She goes after the ball, she can control the ball, she can charge herself, take it up into the center. But, you know, and now that you don't have you know, someone who's all world is Jalen Howell, and that's not to slight Leilani Nesbitt at all. She's been great. But you want to be able to allow your players who are also flourishing to really feed them and allow themselves to be free. And that's like the likes of Jenna Nyswan, the likes of Jody Brown, Beata Olsen. And now you see, you know, Olivia Garcia, you know, coming up here with two goals in the last couple games. You know, you want to allow those players to have some fun and be free and, and, and play the game that they're used to playing and what's their best formation? What's their best shape? I think they're figuring that out here in these last couple games. It's certainly coming out of these second halves. It's taking them a little, a little bit to get their feet underneath them, but they're certainly finding their way. The more time they, and again, the more games they play, the better they're going to get. They're certainly improving as the season is going on. 
players like Olivia Garcia, Jody Brown, Leilani Nesbeth, they look on, smiles on their faces. A lot of belief in these Seminoles this year, preseason number one coming in. Uh, picked fourth in the ACC preseason polls. So now you get bulletin board material, yeah. huh? <laughs> I mean, usually a lot of the headlines have been just pray, nothing but praise for Florida State the last several years. They have been the gold standard. Won four of the five last ACC tournaments. National championships, you know, coming in three within the past 10 years. Players like Jenna Nyswanger right there, familiar with success. So when you see that coming up across, you know, to be picked fourth, it's like, well, wait a minute now. We haven't gone away. We're still here. We've still got all the talent in the world to compete and challenge. So you find any motivation you can. But I think they also do recognize the challenge, and they think they welcome that. It gives them a new sense of life and a new sense of purpose. It's not just the same old story. It's certainly, you know, when you have a new coach, that changes. But when people start talking different, changing their tune a little bit, you catch that. You still stay motivated and you find new ways to get the best out of yourself. The question becomes for FSU, how quickly can you evolve? How quickly can you advance, gel together, build that chemistry? You know, Clara Robbins said it's some of it's up to us as players to help build that chemistry for Coach Pinsky. It's not all on him to figure out how he fits with us. We need to figure out how we fit with him. And it's up to the older players. The younger players coming in, we still have to lead them. It's still Florida State. This is FSU soccer. And yes, Mark Krikorian, one of the legends of the game, maybe the best modern day coach that the game saw in the last 20 years. But Brian Pinsky's pretty good too. You can check his resume if you want. And you can check this program's passion, the fans that show up on a night in and night out basis. They expect to be playing deep into November and making college cups, and that's an expectation I think Brian Penske is embracing. Well, it's hard to find a better coach than Brian Penske, who, you know, wanted the, or, you know, originally said probably not, but, you know, he, he kept on talking and kept on thinking about it. And he said, you know what, I, I could use a new challenge. You know, I could, you know, I could come back to the ACC and, you know, embrace this program and, you know, go for something I still haven't gotten. I want a national championship for the team, for the players I coach. He's, only, he's the only active coach, you know, to have an ACC, SEC, and National Coach of the Year. Not everybody can say that. To do it in multiple different conferences, and the SEC is one of the better conferences. I, you know, the ACC has certainly proven to be the top tier. You, know, you can have, you know, make a case for the Pac-12 with what USC and UCLA have done over the years. But Brian pesky has been a force in the SEC too. And he brings in a coach, a new coaching staff too, with excellent pedigree see Bobby Shuttleworth over there on the left side of your screen former MLS goalkeeper MLS fans will know that name well New England Revs Atlanta United Got drafted by the New England Revolution makes an acro acrobatic save so he certainly is probably teaching Christina Roque a few new tricks and you also bring in Aaron Brunner an assistant coach who has been so instrumental to the US developmental system Found out earlier excellent today. Recruiter. Excellent recruiter. Found out earlier today, Brunner actually scouts for Team USA. He uh, scouts opposing teams for the U.S. Women's National Team. I mean, that's elite. So when you have the international pedigree that Florida State's been able to garner, and then you bring in a guy like Aaron Brunner, who can bring the best of the best in the United States here. Ball over Look the it. top, it's a chip, now to the left side, shot on goal, and it's good! <laughs> Olivia left out. Lepdawi coming through big time. Gets behind the Eagles' high line. No chance for Sullivan. Look at that. Excellent touch. Dribble through the legs. Sullivan just can't believe it. And Penske and the coaching staff are all smiles here. Sitting back and loving it here in this second half. Five goals for the Seminoles. 
What an explosion here in the second half. That, another freshman cashing in here, Aria, Olivia Lebdawi. Started out in the first half is a ton of question marks. And the Seminoles on unstable ground. It's turned into an absolute runoff by Florida State. It's a route. Five goals. Absolute tale of two halves. FGCU really put up a great fight here in the first. I think they just got out of shape. Florida State forced the issue against the Eagles and found pockets and really just were so much more accurate here in the second half. And boy, did it pay off dividends. Fireworks in the second half for Florida State. Five goals and a blowout of the FGCU Eagles here in the month of September. Brian Penske and Florida State remain unbeaten. And the Seminoles' home winning streak continues here in Tallahassee. Yeah, it's still unbeaten.